she came to Western North Carolina when there was really very little collaboration um, happening across lines of difference in our region. Mm -hmm. um, when there were just a handful of organizations who were serving our growing immigrant community, um, she's left us with a sense of everything is possible mm -hmm. and what it takes to make something possible is that people speak up and speak out for one another. She has left a lot of systems in place like the community centers that she has started and facilitated. She's left a lot of open dialogue now between groups that will continue forth and um, the cleaning cooperatives that she has launched that will continue forth and so she has really planted, I mean not just seeds, there are big trees mm -hmm. now so that the forest is getting um, thicker with people who are really learning how to work together and live together. She's able to balance holding vision and saying yes we can have a workplace that looks different, we can have an economy that looks different and she's also able to balance that with what are the steps we need to do to get there. Andrea has been my, my teacher, my mentor, my friend, as much as what I have learned as a woman, as a woman in this movement, as a woman in this fight, is thanks to her. The struggle for the recognition that as immigrants, even though we're maybe newcomers, we are part of the community and we, this is our home too. This is, this is where our children are growing, this is where we are working and there is like this disconnect between maybe our work and us as whole human beings. So I, I think that I think it's this the biggest issue is this struggle for for being integrated, for being acknowledged and recognized as part of the community. She is really the epitome of a servant leader. She knows how to lead from the back of the room encouraging and allowing everyone's voice to speak up and really giving them the tools that they can then express what they want to create and then she helps figure out how to facilitate them creating what they want to create. I think one of my favorite stories is uh, Beatriz. She was very shy. Um, she was working at a hotel and now she's basically, she's like the supervisor in the cooperative. So in a two and a half period, uh, Two and a half year period, uh, she was able to. Uh, she has taken different bi uh, business classes, QuickBooks, uh, how to start a business. She bought a computer. She learned how to use a computer. She learned the finances of the business. She knows them from left to right and upside down. Um, and she has, so she has become a leader in in the business, and she feels so secure about what she knows and about helping other women. Plus the fact that she has now a job that she likes, where she feels treated f uh, with justice, with dignity, and, and she's, making, she's making good money. That is a very empowering thing. You know, it's not just about helping people start businesses or whatever, it's about changing people so that when they go out and look at life, they take it on in a much deeper way, mm -hmm. a much bigger way. I think we still have so many things that separate us and that divide us that I, I really see our communities talking more to each other, hearing our stories more and, and really understanding each other and, and, and learning from each other. Yeah.